Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to be leading our webinar on how to build a better UI with React and Kenda UI. So to start things off, let me introduce myself. My name is Tara Manisik and I am a developer advocate for Progress. So I work with the Kenda UI team to help bring information about the awesome things that they're coming out with. Like what we're talking about today, the Kendo UI library support for React. So I'm very excited to walk you through kind of getting ready um, to start your project for React and get in your Kendo UI components so you could build your React apps much faster and more robust with our React wrappers. During the webinar or even after, when you're building your own React app with our Kendo UI components, you may have some questions. So please feel free if you have any questions or any comments to hit us up on Twitter at hashtag HeyKendoUI. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have, but on top of that, we will be rewarding one of you curious listeners with these Bose SoundLink Around Air wireless headphones. A lot to say, but it's just because these headphones are awesome. So <laughs> get your questions in there. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to get your feedback and give you any answers to any questions that you may have. And we'd also love to give you these headphones. Without further ado, let's jump in. I want to start by taking you to the Kenda UI support for React website. If you're familiar with Kenda UI, you know that we are very passionate about delivering great UI components that suit your needs. That's why we support jQuery, Angular, and now React and Vue. With one license, you can get support for all four. So if your framework path changes, as sometimes it does, your UI library doesn't have to. You can check out the roadmap to see what's coming down the line and see what components we currently have available here. We also offer awesome technical support and lots of other great resources. One resource I find super handy are our demos. You can check out these components plus the different iterations on how to implement them across different libraries. There are great code examples and if you want to dig in more, you can click edit this example and open it up in Plunker. Let's jump right in by creating a React app. We'll head to a directory our project can live in and globally install Create React App using NPM. Create React App is an awesome command line tool that lets you spin up a React app without worrying about your build configurations, which can be quite a tedious process. Looks like our NPM needs updated and since it's always a good idea to keep it up to date, I'll do that now. <laughs> Now that we have Create React App installed globally, we just need to use it to create a project by typing Create React App and our project name. Once that is all built, we can head into the directory and see what we've got. The first thing we can do is run npm start. This script is running React script start. When we head over to localhost 3000, we can see that our sample React app is running exactly how it's supposed to. Yay! If we look inside our source directory, we can see we have our main app files, style, and JavaScript, as well as the main project files, index.js and index.css. Before we start making any edits though, Let's actually go back to the terminal and run git init to make this a git directory so we have version control. Then we'll run git remote add origin and add our project directory on github to put our code. Using gst or git status, you can see we just have the new files that create react app gave us. We'll push those up to the repository so that we have a nice place to go back if everything blows up in our face. <laughs> now that we're all set, let's add some kendo components. The first one we'll add is the buttons wrappers. You can install these all in a single line, but I want to walk us through each one as we install them. 
So the button is pretty self-explanatory, but the next component we're adding is date inputs, and that has a little more to it. Today we'll be making a little form just to wrap our minds around just how easy it is to implement Kendo UI components into our React apps. We'll be adding a date picker from the date inputs module, but that also comes with a calendar, date input, date time picker, and a time picker component. Next for the form, we'll be adding the inputs module. Like the date inputs module, this comes with mass text box, slider, and numeric text box, which is the one we'll use today. I also wanted to install the chart module. Uh, chart doesn't really have anything to do with the form that we're building per se, but it's so ridiculously fast and easy to add a chart into your app, I had to show it off. You may want to add a chart to everything you build after this. Obviously, I did. <laughs> Second to last, we add the Kendo UI base library to make sure that everything runs and works swimmingly. Last but definitely not least, we're installing the Kendo UI default theme. I love having this default theme. I'm rubbish at styling because CSS is hard. <laughs> So this default library does all the work of styling the components for you, and I find it to be such a relief. While we're on the topic of styling, I want to remind you about the Progress Theme Builder that you can use with your Kendo UI components. I am a big, big fan of this builder because you can start with your own theme or our default theme or bootstrap, and then customize as your heart desires. You can look through all the components, make sure they're coming out the way you want them, and when you're ready, you can hit the download button and get a nice bundle of style sheets. It just makes styling and customizations less of a stress. All right, who's ready to jump into code? I am. Here's a glimpse of what our project directory looks like. We're going to spend most of our time in the source directory today, building up our app. But before we do that, let's open up our index.html file inside the public directory to add our bundle.js script inside some script tags. This file will contain the bundled scripts for our app, including our Kendo UI for React widgets. Okay, we'll close out that script tag and save and move on. Next, we'll open back up the file directory to move to the file that we will spend most of our time on today, the app.js file. We don't need the logo anymore, so we'll get rid of that import and we'll start importing what we need from our Kendo UI libraries. First, we start with the main Kendo UI library. Then we can import the styling we need for our components by importing the default styling module. It's amazing how many times I have typed the word default, yet the U always thinks it needs to go first. I'll get it one of these days. Next, I'll add our first component, the date picker. 
As you can see, I'm only pulling in the date picker from the date inputs module instead of bringing in the whole library because we're only using the date picker today. You can do this with all of the components. I will warn you, I am adding some mistakes as we go through so we can see what errors look like when they're coming from different sections. They're not big ones and we'll fix them later, but just to give you a heads up. For now, let's move inside our app component. We're going to add our constructor passing in props. And inside there, we'll add super also passing in props. This lets us access this dot props inside of our constructor. Then we're going to attach a property date time to this dot state. We're going to use this on our date picker. Initially, we'll assign it to a new date. Then, in order to make sure that we have the right instance of this attached to our change on change method, we'll bind this dot on change to the this inside of our constructor. Thank goodness this is never confusing. <laughs> Next, we need to create the on change function and pass the event or E to it. Inside there, we'll just console log the value that the event is sending. And we'll also use that event trigger that lets us know there has been a change to set date, time, and state to that same value, which will be the value our user clicked in the date picker as we shall see. Oops, I jumped all around, all around and wrong. Silly Vim fingers. Okay, we are now headed into the HTML. Adding Kendall UI components is pretty straightforward. First, let's get rid of all this old stuff. Then we'll add a div that the date picker can go inside. This isn't necessary for the component. You could just plop it straight in there, but I figure it may be good for styling later on. Inside of that div, we add our component by just putting the name of the component. In this case, date picker. Inside angle brackets. We want to add some parameters to our date picker though. First, we'll set the value to this dot date time, which if you recall, first gets set to a new date. Then when on change is triggered, gets set to whatever the user picked. Next, we'll add a min date value that the calendar will go down to. And we'll also set a max date value that we'll set to your birthday. <laughs> I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. I'm just kidding. But that could be right. And if so, happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, next I set the format to how the value date is displayed. Then bind the change event to our on change function. We'll close out the date picker parameters and also add its self closing tag. Since we have that start script running in the background, on save, our app refreshes and we can see there's an error locating our theme script. If I were to look at my node modules folder inside and inside at progress, I would see that the CSS file I'm looking for is inside the dist or distributables folder. So I'll change that up here. 
Now, the build is fine. We don't have that warning in the terminal, but still something seems to be wrong. Aha, there is no onChange function because the onChange function isn't camel case that we built. We will go into our code and fix these mistakes. And remember that everyone makes mistakes because PoBuddy's nerfed. <laughs> Let's see what we have now. And voila, we have a date picker. So if you go in and click the calendar button, you get a lovely style calendar that lets you scroll over and click dates. Oh, but look here. It seems I have formatted the year wrong. I feel like next time we'll do this like a kid's show where you have to shout out what's wrong with the page. <laughs> Let's go back into our app.js, find the format, and add that extra Y to get all four numbers of our year. Save and head back. We see that we have a date sans extra Y. Yay! If we fiddle around in here, we see all the functionality we can get out of just a few lines of code. Now, since we have something working well, let's go ahead and commit what we've added. Using GST or get status again, we see only the app.js has changed. Then if we check with GD or get diff, we can see we got rid of the old stuff and added our new date picker. Everything looks good, so let's use get a or get add period to add it all. Double check that we still just have the source app.js. Then make a totally mundane commit message. Use ggpush and alias for get push origin master and send it up to our repo. Then we'll run npm start again to keep our application up. There is our date picker. Now let's add a bunch more components so our simple form starts to take shape. Going back to app.js, we start by importing the components we need to add. And again, we'll only grab the ones we're using, not the whole module. First, we add the numeric text box. Then we get to add the chart, which in this case will be a bar chart. And finally, a button for submitting our form. For now, it will just be a decoration so we can see how it looks and how we implement it. Now that we have all the tools we need, let's get to molding our application to include all the things. First, we add a div for the numeric text box component. A little hard to say. And then, just like our date picker, add the numeric text box container inside. Now that's all set, we can add the numeric text boxes parameters. For this one, we're thinking dollars and cents. So we'll give the user the ability to have up to two decimals. The format will be C0, which as we'll see eventually is to give the dollar sign. Treat it like money. Then we have our min and max, 
which are pretty self-explanatory. We'll cap our max out at 500, just because. <laughs> Next, I want to turn rounding on so that we can have a whole number. So that will be set to true. We'll add loading spinners just in case by setting spinners to true as well. Finally, we'll set the default value to 22 because it's my favorite number. <laughs> Okay, we have everything here that we need. As you can see, we have a pattern here with Kendo UI components. You add the initial component by putting its name in angle brackets. Then you have the ability to bind its events and parameters. You can check out the API to see all the ways you can customize your Kendo UI components. We're just previewing a few here today. I'm noticing that my formatting is a little off so I'll go ahead and fix that before we add our next component. Now this, I think, is pretty awesome. Are you ready to write a bunch of code to add a chart to our app, a chart that you could bind some data to get some data visualizations. Here we go. First, we add the chart component. Next, we need it to have the information to display, so we bind series to an array of two objects that each have a data property containing an array of numbers. In the future, you could bind this to live data, files of data, or even user input. But today it's just static data, and we didn't even have to use more than one line. So yes, I was joking. There was not that much code that we needed to write. This one isn't complicated, but I wanted to show you just how easy it was. Add a self-closing tag, and we're on to the next component. Last but not least, we have to add a button. If you've added a button before, this should look pretty familiar. We just have to add the buttons open and closing tags plus the button message, which in this case is check rates. Let's go look at what we have here. So we have everything here now on the page. It didn't take long at all to get some components on the screen, but now let's make them look half decent. <laughs> okay, again, I am no designer, but here are the next steps we take. First, we'll add a header so everyone knows what we're doing here. Then, we'll put all of our date pickers inside of a div to style them together. Next, we'll add some tags to our date picker so the user knows why they are even picking dates. <laughs> we'll copy our current date picker to make a second one that will act as the checkout date. Next, we pretty much do the same thing for the numeric text boxes, putting them together in a div and also letting them have labels so we know what they're for.
Well, we've got labels. Let's dig into the styling. First things first, and also one of my favorite parts, we copy and paste the link tag from Google Fonts to add it to our public index.html file. That means it will be applied across the whole project. Then in the main index.css file, like index.html, the styles you set here will be applied to your whole project. So we'll set the font family to the new Google font we chose. We'll also set the background images to pineapples, because who doesn't enjoy looking at pineapples? Like I said, I'm not a designer. <laughs> Now we have a more attractive app, but let's do better with the form. To do so, we'll go into app.css. To do this, we'll go into app.css, which here controls the main component of our app. I'm just going to paste all the style I use, but it's basically spacing everything out. If we go back into our app.js file, it looks like we may have accidentally removed the reference to our app.css file. So let's bring it back so that our changes take effect. Oops. We are only up one directory. And here we have a decent, readable, clean form to take a look at some of our awesome components that we can now use with our React apps. Before I go, I'd like to show you one more nifty thing. Whenever you build a project with Create React app, it starts you on your way to a progressive web app. A progressive web app, or PWA, is basically a process of taking advantage of modern day technologies to help your web app perform better on mobile networks via smartphones and act similar to native apps when used on a smartphone. If you look in the public folder, there is a manifest.json. Where it is supported, this file lets you set parameters that help browsers display your app on your user's phone to look like a native app by setting a home screen icon and displaying in full screen view without the browser chrome on the top and bottom. So if you look at this manifest.json, we'll just change the name so we can see the change. If you hosted this and saved it on your home screen on your phone, the short name would be what was written below your icon, which you can also set here in the manifest.json. Um, for now, we'll just see the data in the browser. There's also a script to register a service worker, but that's a whole other fun topic we can cover another time. So now, if we look in DevTools at the Application tab, we can see our updated manifest.json information. So basically, this means that with Kendo UI and React using Create React App, you are on your way not only to a fast, robust, and awesome web application, but since you have the ability to also add and make it a more progressive web app, more pwa you are starting to get into the web side of giving your users a great application that works both well on their mobile device and on, their, on the web on their laptops. So Kendo UI can just help you make that responsive, awesome website even faster. Just a fun tidbit. I hope you had a great time learning how easy it is to add Kendo UI components to your React apps. You can check out the docs for lots more examples and information on these components.
This is a great resource as you're getting started and also as you're making your way through utilizing everything these components can bring to your project. Remember to ping us at Hey Kendo UI to ask any questions and add yourself to the running for those awesome Bose headphones. I cannot wait to see what you create with Kendo UI components and React. Have a great day and thanks for coding with me.